today's video. Welcome back to London and winter kit. Luckily, not quite gloves weather. I'm just riding into town to Jam HQ. We've got some work to do today. Bit of a photo shoot for some of the kit we sell. All right, how's it going, dude? Good to see you. All right. <laughs> All right. Pressure. It's freezing here. <laughs> it's fucking Why horrible. am I back in London? Like, and you've got a tailwind. Wait till you go home. I'm just going to stay at Jam HQ. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> I've just been chewing the bike. Fucking warning. Five minutes in London on the bike through Richmond Park. Already bumping someone I know. We're going to end up knowing each other pretty well in the next few weeks because we're, uh, well, June, running across the Alps. Yes. And the Pyrenees. And the Dolomites. Oh. And Von Tu. Uh, and all in between. <laughs> well, I better do some training into oh. this tailwind. So that was Nick, who I'm riding with in June for the Movember ride. We're both trying to get some big miles in before then. As I was just saying, off to work, tailwind the whole way. Be good to catch up with Chris and Jess. Haven't seen him since Calpe. Hey. Wisdom. I need a piss. Hello. I need a piss. <laughs> need a piss. What really an entrance, bad. mate. What's up, figs, whatever they are. I don't know what they are. Should we open them? These are team socks. I think we can show them. Let's just show them. Whoa. Are these aero socks? I heard they're worth five watts at 40k an hour. Five million watts. I'm an expert now. Oh, you can tell it's five watts. Yeah. Yeah. All them trip lines. <laughs> that is the noise of aerodynamics. <laughs> so it just got changed, but I think we're going back outside in a minute to actually do the photo shoot. Barbican. Barbican. So we're taking some photos of some kit. We're going to head further into central, uh, try and find some good locations and do it there. I'm actually itching to get riding. Like I, w I want to run my bike. A couple of days off since the Argus and yeah, need it. Do you like my bike? I like your saddlebag. It's nice and tidy. I like your mount actually. This is a this is the best bit. You've yeah. chosen the really exciting parts. Well, there. mate, it's really look at it. Look. It's very solid, isn't it? I cleaned it. You, yeah, it's cleaner than mine for once. One more time. I like that. I don't like bottle cages. They're all really ugly, cheap and plasticky. Jess is gonna go and instruct a yoga class. So or skiing. skiing. <laughs> yeah. Is that point? Look at that. Uh, this is actually a seat post, everyone. That should be on my bicycle. It's got bend in it. George is starting a vlog. Is he? Yeah, look, you got a new camera. It's one, isn't it? RX 100. It's not actually in there, is it? Look, this empty. is a box. This is the camera, mate. Five, Roman six, four. Roman numerals, four. four. What's he gonna vlog about? <laughs> So what you do, if you put... Talk about beards. Beards, beer and... And pullbacks descending from the ceiling. What are you doing? My bike fell over. <laughs> I can't hold it still. Taking photos, it's dangerous business. All right, should we go barbican? <laughs> Can you do it again? So Brexit's going well. No comment. We will leave politics out of the vlog. Bike fell over, didn't it? Did it bend your mech? I think it might have bent my mech a little bit. It's a long one like mine. Yeah. They're very annoying. Yeah. For this exact reason. Yeah. And I never put a really big cassette on, so I don't know what I've got it every time my bike falls over. What's wrong with it? It's a little hair. There's a hair on it. Got it. It's always a bad time when there's hair in your bike. <laughs> yeah, hangers fine. Cage is a bit bent. He don't want to go back, does he? Well, I was hoping this was going to be steady tailwind, but it's definitely not. Gusts all over the place. You're doing like 40 k's an hour, and then you're doing like 20 k's an hour. And then you're doing like 40 k's an hour again. Apparently, this is Storm Gareth. Hitman. Oh yeah, Gareth is a hitman, it isn't he? It's Gareth. Why are you doing this, Storm Gareth? It's going to take me so long to ride home later. Do you remember, mate, when this bit first opened and these bumps used to be little launch pads to basically get as much air? They, they were like, it was a little smooth, pump track. They smoothed they it go. out. Whoop. It used to be so aggressive that you could literally jump up on it. Blue sky, but it's raining at the same time. Are we going to see a rainbow? I hope so. It's my favourite thing. I love them. Like, I love them. It's like magic and science all in one. <laughs> Jess loves rainbows, mate. We've been here before, haven't we? Black wall. Black wall. Famous black wall, that. Black wall tunnel. You go, go, on, go through. We're gonna do photos of bike and not bike, and yeah. let's do like everything. You ready? Ready. Having fun there. Nearly punch that guy in the face. Go punch him, have a fight. <laughs> Get loads of views, mate. I love the sign. Oh, the sign that says no cycling. Yeah. I mean, we're not gonna do any cycling. 
We're not, we're just gonna walk up it and stand still. So we've just come to the Barbican, which is a nice little playground for taking photos. No cycling though. So we're just gonna walk the bikes. I need you guys down there. Down there? Yeah. Next to the no cycling side? Mm. We yeah. Photoshop that out. No cycling. Ooh. No cycling. Shit. Yeah, but Jess is a good runner. I can't run. <laughs> That's actually true. I was scared that that white man was gonna arrest us. He was just sat there for a while, wasn't he? <laughs> like, yeah. Does that fit in with the Will Girling diet plan? Yeah, actually. It's really healthy. The whole thing is only six calories. How many is it? 380. No, it's not. There is. No. Go I on refuse to, to believe that. Go on to Pill Pal's website. Got there the is new. lies. There's lies, There's lies. nutritional lies. <laughs> You're all for the way home. I want to be nice and keep Mark company, but also it's freezing cold, so sorry. You don't have to, and I'm on my lunch, so. Good <laughs> <laughs> see you, buddy. There's some sort of uh, taxi cab strike going on. They've all parked up in Parliament Square. Not really sure what they're protesting about. I'll look up a little bit about it when I go home. On the plus side for us, close roads. That's a music festival. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> well, headwind all the way home. I was expecting this. I'm gonna ride hard, get it over and done with. And then, a lot of you have been asking, short review of my bike so far. So to start off with, I apologize for the sound coming from that direction. There's some work being done on the house next door to us. Hopefully this mic doesn't pick it up. So this is the Vilio Trestina Cento 10 Pro, and I've changed a few parts on it. So it's not completely stock. First, I'll start with the frame set. Now, the last time I'd ridden an aero carbon frame set was back a few years ago when I was racing on a Specialized and it was the first edition Venge. I really didn't get on with that bike because I'm quite a light rider. And because of, I guess, the limitations of carbon layup, back then, getting an aero shaped bike that was still comfortable was really difficult. So when I first found out that Vilia were gonna lend me this bike for the year, I was a little bit apprehensive. Thought it might suffer from the same problems, but absolutely not. I guess the advancement of technology in a few years really does make a difference. Aero bikes these days are comfortable and they're great. Now, obviously I haven't done any proper aero testing with it. Maybe I will get a chance this year to take it into the wind tunnel or with aero coach around the velodrome, but it's pretty safe to say the aerofoil shapes of the tubes do make a difference. How much? I'm just not sure. So far, I've been exclusively riding 58 mil spin on these wheels. You may have seen a few videos back where Drew, the guy who makes them, talked me through it a little bit. I'll put a link down below to that. I'm gonna lie, there's been a few sketchy moments in crosswinds, namely out in South Africa, but those were extreme conditions. For everything else, they've been fine. And again, I'd rather have the aero benefit, especially because I'm quite unfit. I'm riding with people who are way fitter than me. On the wheel sets I've got on have been the Continental GP 5000s. They've really been through some shit and I haven't had a single puncher touch wood. There's actually really not that many cuts on them. They're a little bit lighter than the 4000s, which I really rated, and they inspired just as much confidence in the corners as well. Disc brakes. Now, a lot of you know, I've been fairly hesitant to switch over to disc brakes. This is Shimano's hydraulic system. So far, my experience has been really, really good. Hands down, they stop better than rim brakes. Combined with the Dura Ace Di2, it basically makes the bike cableless. It makes the frame set look super clean, and there isn't really anything rattling around. What I would say about the discs is, ask me again, in six months time when I've had it in and out of a bike bag numerous times because the maintenance is kind of what I worry about. And if you start bending rotors and things like that by accident, how easy is it to solve? Perhaps the solution is to take disc rotors off when you travel. I have had a couple of people tell me that. If anyone else has some advice, like maybe mountain bikers who travel a lot, please put it in the comments below. Should you take them off? It's only a cassette tool, you need to do it. The power meter that I'm riding is the InfoCrank. Um, we do sell that at the company that I work for, so perhaps I'm biased, but it's the same one off my other bike. I haven't changed the battery for about six months and it's still working 100%. It is the most accurate power meter you can buy. I guess the looks are a bit marmite, but I'd rather have a working power meter than a pretty bike. Also, the nice thing about InfoCrank is that if you've got two different power meters on two different bikes, they are gonna read the same. This is absolutely the fastest bike I've ever ridden. When you put the power down, it just wants to go. And you notice it straight away. As soon as I jump on the gravel bike where it's obviously for adventure and it needs way more compliance to be comfortable, that's the moment you realize how stiff the other bike is. If I had a gripe, it would be the initial setup. Now this isn't really a big deal because luckily I had brown on hand, but when I got the bike out of the box, there was a big stack on it and for it to fit me, I needed to get rid of some. To get rid of some, I needed to re-bleed the front brake. And I haven't got the tools to do that here. I then wanted to figure out how I could have a GoPro and a Wahoo sat on top of it at the same time. And that turned out to be an Amazon job uh, all the way from Japan. It cost me about 90 quid in the end with postage. Bottle cages I've been using have been Fidlocks. So they use magnets, you can take your bottles on and off. And if you wanna ride your bike in a Prolog or something like that, and you wanna take both bottles off, you can. And it doesn't, and you haven't got a cage left there. I actually got one of these given to me for free when I entered Rad Race Tour de Friends. It was in the little bag. And now at work, we really want to stock them because it's such a good idea. Obviously, if you're doing a road race and handing up bottles from the side of the road, you probably want a normal bottle, but for any other use, really good. So that's a bit of a short term review of my bike. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more tests for it to come. The ride across pretty much the whole of Europe is going to test it. Also, GB Duro is coming out. So that'll be an amazing chance to give the gravel bike a real test. As usual, thank you so much for watching. It's getting dark already. I'll see you tomorrow.